Hello my students. Really nice to be sending out the class again. I'm so sorry you're not here, but we'll do the best we can. I hope you're going to enjoy this and online class to keep us going. So what we're going to do today is a bit of mixed media. Inspired by this photograph I took on a walk the other day, well, a month ago, of the snowdrops in the village and I've been meaning to do it for ages. So it's going to be inspired by this. We're going to start off with a little bit of drawing. We're going to be using some gesso, some sand, some masking fluid, and then we're going to be doing a picture with inks and with acrylics on top of it. So to begin, you're going to need a pencil. You can look at the picture I'm doing and pause it to copy the picture. A pencil, you're, I'm using a piece of card. You can use a canvas, you can use a board, you can use paper, yeah? You could use watercolour paper or acrylic paper, just the same. This is a little off cut of mount board. You're going to need some masking fluid. Any make is absolutely fine. Make sure it's not too old because it will have jellyfied and gone hideous. So you're going to need some masking fluid. You're going to need some gesso. Now gesso is a primer for canvas. If you haven't got gesso, you can use white acrylic paint or you can use white emulsion. It's absolutely fine. And I've got a little box here of sand to create some texture. This is builder's sand that I nicked from next door when the builders were in out of their big sack. You could, no you can't go down to the beach to get any at the moment. You'll have to go find some builder's sand somewhere and steal it. Okay. And you want an old brush for putting your masking fluid onto the paper. So that will do for this session. A pencil, some masking fluid and an old brush some gesso, some sand, and a palette knife. And that will do your first session, okay? And then we'll leave it to dry. Okay, off we go. So although this is my photograph, I'm only inspired by this. I'm just gonna draw some snowdrops, okay? So let's go, and they've got They've got a little sort of bell cap on top, like so. And then the snowdrops come out in one petal, two petals. There's a little one in the middle. And there's a third one, which is just hiding around there. So there's one done. I'm going to do another one by here. Start with the little bell cap again. Put one petal and two petals maybe go out as a bit. I'm going to put another one going across there and a third petal, petal and the insidey bit by there. Here's another one going to overlap it. One petal. This one's at a slightly different angle so we'll put the second petal in the front and the third one going round there. And another one by here. He can go behind one petal, two petals, and there's almost like a little bottom shape in the middle. Sometimes you only see a piece, sometimes you see the whole shape. Let's put a couple more in. We want a little bunch of these. Notice that I'm not putting them right in the middle. They're going over to one side and this is going to come down a bit. So there's a little bit of a diagonal happening in your picture. Okay, so we'll go here, 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 and down under here. Lovely, and another one up here. Put the little bell cap in. One petal. Two petals, let's make him a bit bigger. A little bit underneath. And there we are. You can carry on doing as many as you wish. I think I'll do... One more down here. Okay, but it's up to you how many you put in. They're all just about the same shape. Okay, I've altered my composition a little bit. I've added the stalks to the, what are they called? Snowdrops. 
sorry. I've added the stalks in and I took one out down here and I put it in up here because it was all looking a little bit too low down. Notice that there's a small gap on this side and a big gap on this side and that there's a general feel of a diagonal. And also notice that they are overlapping each other. Oh, I can see a bit I needed to rub out there. Uh, so we're going to leave these lines in. We're going to lose them later. That will be fine. Okay, and now we're going to use some masking fluid and we're going to mask out the snowdrops. So these have got childproof tops, so they take me about half an hour to get off. Oh, yay, done it. Okay. Give the masking fluid a shake before you use it. And make sure that you use a really old brush. Some of you might have trendy applicators for it. But I'm just using an old brush, which actually isn't my brush, if anybody recognises it. It's too late now, I'm sorry. It's been masking fluided. And I'm going to masking fluid out all these snowdrops and their tops and their stalks. Take your time, get it as correct as you can. You'll notice that the stalks don't sort of all end anywhere. They're an impression. We're probably going to get rid of a lot of them afterwards, but I'd like them to be masked out in the beginning, and then we get some choices with what to do with them later on. Don't put your mask in fluid too thick. And what this stuff does, it keeps the picture white. And we can put ink over the rest of the picture and it won't touch wherever the masking fluid is. And when we've finished, you can simply peel off the masking fluid. It's a bit like rubber. It's very satisfying to peel it off, actually. So you only need to put it on thinly. And if there happen to be any tiny, tiny gaps, it's not going to matter. Don't worry about it. So we'll go all the way through. Dreadful stuff, mind. And it will ruin the brush. Make sure it's an old brush. Because it sort of dries on the brush to a, like a rubber coating. So I tend to keep the same one. They do say that if you put it in water every 10 seconds, then it won't clog up but I can't be bothered with that. I hope you're all doing okay out there without classes. We're going to get through this and get to the end. And then the first class back, we'll have a party and celebrate. But for now, what it does give you is an awfully long time to paint. I hope you're all getting our weekly challenges please send your pictures in we've had loads of pictures already they'll be going up on the website and on facebook as they come in i believe and we're going to choose a winner on saturday and the prize is absolutely nothing <laughs> just just be nice to have won because like everybody else we got no money now so it has to be the pride of winning. But we are going to choose one every week. And we might ask somebody else in the family to choose one every week, or we might send the images off to somebody that doesn't know you all and get them to choose so that you can't say we're biased. And then you can't be cross with us for not choosing you. Nearly there. And it all masked out. So you can take your time masking it out and when it's all done we're going to leave it to dry a little minute. Okay, carry on till it's all masked. Okay, I've had to turn it around now, I'm sorry, just to do the next bit and then I'll turn it back so you can see what I'm doing. But I have to work this way around for the camera. 
So now I'm going to use my gesso and we're going to make some texture on the, on the bottom of this picture, ready to ink it. Using my palette knife, and I'm going to pick up big wadges of gesso, bang them on here, and with my palette knife, I'm just going to spread it around a bit. And also, I'm going to start to make grassy shapes with it. So I got a bit much on there, let's put a bit up there. There we are. There we are, that's what we want. Can you see the textures that it's putting onto the paper? So I'm using, if you use your palette knife like this, you get a fan, which is quite nice, or you can just pull it around, make some pretty texture, just like we did when we were doing, getting texture underneath a painting the other week. In class, for those of you who were in class, I realise not all of you were, so I'm not going everywhere and I'm not covering everything, but what I'm trying to do is make some shapes that will that will come out through the inks and through the paints afterwards. I'm not worrying too much about the masking fluid. I'm just hoping it will come off that afterwards. What I am just making sure I'm doing is not starting an inch in everywhere, starting right out on the edge. I want my snowdrops to stay quite fragile, so I'm not putting any on top of the snowdrops, but it is going in and around and making some grassy shapes through it. Now, on top of that, I'm going to get my sand. Whoops, let's put that straight for you. And I'm going to sprinkle some sand. Not everywhere. Some places fairly heavy, some places a little lighter. I'll leave that corner up there without any. Maybe pat it in. If at this point you want to embed any leaves or any little stalks from the garden, absolutely brilliant. Feel free. And then I'm going to just knock it off. And there's our next layer. So I've got sand embedded into the gesso. The gesso has been sort of carved a little bit and your paint will do the same or your emulsion. It's not thick. If you do it really thick, it becomes a little bit clumsy. So don't do it too thick. I'm going to put a little bit more sand down in that corner. That's going to be a heavy corner there. And put a bit more sand down there. There we are. Knock off the excess. Half an inch thick will not make a nice picture, okay? But you can see already where stalks and things are coming through. So, by there, we're going to leave it to dry. And then we're going to start to put some colour on it. A la Blue Peter. Here's one I've done earlier, because otherwise I would have had to wait half the day for it to dry. Okay, so we're carrying on. Materials for this second bit. I've got acrylics in lemon yellow and white. Okay, I've got acrylic inks. You can use watercolours or any sort of drawing inks will be absolutely fine. I've got my favourite colours because, again, I've tried to use different colours and I just can't because I like these. So I've got Sennelier Purple, which is actually pink. I've got Sennelier Olive Green, which appears to be empty, but I've got another one in the box here. I've got Liquitex Prussian Blue and I've got Liquitex Golden Yellow. So those are my four inks and my acrylics. I've got a pot of water. I've got my palette knife. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use it or not, but be ready. I've got a brush for my acrylics. And I've got a mop brush for some water for making it wet. Right, let's begin. My masking fluid is still on here. You can paint over the top of the masking fluid and it will rub off later on. 
So I'm going to begin with some lemon yellow acrylic. Put some into my palette. Not certain whether I want water, um, white with it or not. Nah, we don't need white with it. I don't think. Let's chuck a bit of that on at the top. Bit of water with it. Spread it out. Don't worry about your masking fluid. It'll all disappear afterwards. So I'm going to get a little bit of this lemon yellow at the top. That's a nice spring is coming colour. And I'm not being at all careful with it. I am really just whacking it on. Okay, didn't use the white. Now I'm going to go into my inks. And this is my golden yellow. So I'm going to warm this yellow up a bit. I can't open it. I got it. Squeeze it up in the pipette. Throw it on your picture. It's just the most fun. And then I'm going to use my nice big mop brush just to move it around a bit, tip and tilt it, let it run. Splash it on like brute. I'm going to introduce another colour up there. So for now I think I'm just going to keep this moving, keep it wet. And let's let it run up into this acrylic. They'll all mix, they're all water-based. Oh, I like the look of that already up there. Now I'm going to go into my green. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to find another pot. Okay, I think I've used them all. So I'm going for this Liquitex Sap Green Permanent instead. I'm going to add some of this to my yellow. Oh, how much fun is that? Then I'm going to let it run around, let it tip and tilt. If you're nice and tidy, you can use some kitchen rolls on your desk so that when you tip it and tilt it, it can run down onto the kitchen roll. But I'm going to also run it upwards a little bit. There we are, and back down, and a little, oh, I think I'm just going to go up and down, actually, is rather nice. Can you see what the sand is doing? The sand is sucking it in and making it dark. Before it dries up in this top corner, I'm going to wet it. And make sure everything's wet, ready for the next colour. Next colour going on, I'm just going to fill up some of these holes. Don't think I want the holes in there. Next colour is a bit of my pink, of course, because why would you not? Because every picture in the whole world has to have pink in it. If it's done by me. Oh wow, look at that. Put some more water, tip it and tilt it. And arrange it where you would like it to be in the picture. Spread it out a bit. Right, okay, we've got some pink on there. That's rather yummy. Now, what we do need is a dark corner. So I'm going to put some dark blue down here. And a little bit along here. A bit has gone up here, doesn't matter. Let's move this around. Let's tip it and tilt it. You have to keep everything really, really wet in order for this to go nice and dark. I'm going to move it up a little bit and I'm going to tip it to the side. And I find this a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to wash it off a little bit. You can move it around such a lot. Oh, look at that lovely pattern that came through there then. Can you see these beautiful patterns? I hope you can see them on the camera. Lovely, lovely patterns starting to arrive in it. I'm going to pull that blue back up again. 
and run it back down again. Now I'm just going to have a look at these colours a minute. I don't want that there. I can also use another bit of kitchen roll. And where I don't think I want it, I can just dab it out. Because we gessoed it, the ink doesn't slurp in as much as if it's just dry paper. Where it's dry paper, the ink goes straight in and you can't move it. Where you've got some gesso, the ink will really slide around. So I'm going to get rid of a little bit here and there down the bottom just to create some different shapes and textures. Get another bit of kitchen roll. Oh, I do like the pink. I feel like in order to balance, I need a little bit of pink over here somewhere. Just a tiny bit to make it all balance. Don't want too much. I'm going to dab a bit off and I'm going to let it run a little bit. Maybe wet the edges a little bit more. Oh, see that's on dry card. That's okay. I've wetted them enough to run. There we are. Now we've got a little bit of balance. We've got a big bit of pink and a little bit of pink. We've got a big bit of yellow. And when this section is dry, I'll introduce some little bits of yellow down there with my palette knife. So we're going to leave that to dry a minute and then we're going to carry on. Right, I've dried this. Now we can carry on. Now we're going to take the plunge and remove the masking fluid. There are a few different ways, okay? You can use your finger and rub it off like this. And then I tend to start picking it stop the colours running. As I said, it's extremely satisfying to do. You can also use, this is called Mask Away, and it's a little block available from the SAA or from us in our shop. And this is for removing masking fluid. Very clever little beastie. You've got to make sure that the paint is completely dry. And because I'm desperate to get on with this, not all my paint might be dry. So I'm going to remove all the masking fluid on here. So we've got our nice white snowdrops. And we are work your way through. One of these mask away pens. I'm not really one for gadgets. Mask away rubbers, I'm sorry. I'm not really one for gadgets, but I do love this. And I do use it a lot. Got all this taken off. It's a bit like peeling after you've been out in the sun. And got burnt. Now I know that blue is not completely dry down there, so I'm going to be careful. Oops, sorry. There we are. A little bit of ink run under there, but it doesn't matter. Oh no, it hasn't. It's come off. It's okay. I know this is all really dry under here. By the way, don't hair dry your picture if you've used masking fluid. It really doesn't like the hair dryer and it tends to weld it to the paper a bit. So if you've used the hair dryer, if you've used masking fluid, don't hair dry it. Just wondering if there's any more anywhere. I don't think so. Okay, so you can see there's a couple of little lines of ink that have sneaked through the masking fluid. And I don't mind that at all. So now I'm going to mix my inks back up, or use my inks again rather. I'm going to put some, let me put this aside to show you what I'm using. A little bit of this Liquitex Sap Green, or if you've got the Sennelier Olive Green, that's beautiful. A little bit of this Golden Yellow. Liquitex Yellow Orange Azo is its correct name. Liquitex Yellow Orange Azo. And... Oh, I think I'll use a little bit of the blue as well. Liquitex Prussian Blue. Put my picture back. And we're going to begin 
with a smaller brush this time to paint in underneath the snowdrops. So I'm going to mix a bit of that green with a little bit of yellow, go a little bit paler and a little bit of water. I don't want it too strong. There we are. And then I'm going to look through here to find the little green shape in the centre of the snowdrop. And it's not on the outside petals, it's just sneaking through the middle of them. Let's do another one. Oh, I can see one by here. So it's the very centre. They're strange little things. And I'm going into the centre and painting that green. And softening the top of it just by washing my brush out, squeezing the excess water out and then just softening the line at the end. A little bit in there, wash my brush out, squeeze out the excess water, soften that line, maybe a little bit showing through there, and definitely some here. Okay, carry on doing that. Right, I should have just showed you the picture, I think, for a little minute. Can you see the little green shapes? inside the snowdrops. I should have showed you that before we painted them. They're very, very beautiful. So now we're going to paint in the little caps on top. So that green that I mixed up, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it to make it a bit darker. That might be a bit overkill. There we are. Let's go again. Let's just get a slightly darker shade and fit in this little green cap on top. And again, I'm going to wet the brush, dry it, and let it go out to a bit of light afterwards. And we can go down the stalk with it as well. And green up the stalk a little bit. So we're going to work our way through. Some of them can be really lit. And the other way around you prefer them to be. They can be really dark. Let's do a really dark one. See which one I prefer. Oh, do you know what? I think I like that. Let's put a bit of dark on that one as well. So we're going to work our way now through all the little tops, getting them all done. And I'll do a few with you and then we'll have a break and you can do them by yourselves. So we'll do a few up here. I think possibly do them dark where they're against the pale yellow and do them lighter where they're against the dark colours. There we are, put in some of the stems and we can change the colours on those a bit afterwards. I might make some of that a little bit darker, dropping in a little bit stronger ink. That's nice. That's nice. And one by here. Washing the brush. Squeezing it out. And then you've got a choice to make it darker or lighter. Down the stem. And there's a stem going down there. Let's get that done. And again, remember if you want them to be pink, they can be pink. It doesn't matter. They are your flowers to do as you wish. Wash the brush, wipe it clean. Get a nice pail in to start. Gives you more choices. If you start off with it pale, a bit of dark into there. I'm going down the stem. And maybe going right down to the bottom there and it could disappear into the colours at the bottom. Just a couple more and then I'm going to leave you to do them. Over there. I've missed a bit of yellow there, look, I'll put that in afterwards. Darken him down a little bit. 
I haven't even got a stalk for that one, but you can always put one in. And you can lighten it up or take it away or take it all the way down the bottom. Up to you. I must make a bit more of this. And up here. Take your time doing these, okay? Get some various different tones in there. Decide if they're going in front or behind. The one behind them, that one's going to go in front. A little bit of dark on there. There we are. Take your time and get all of those finished. So if you've got all those little green bells filled in there, let's put a little bit of shadow into the snowdrops. And what you've got to think about is that underneath here there's shadow and on parts of the petal there's going to be a bit of shadow. And I've put a little bit of my sennelier pink into another one, mixed it with the blue and made a nice lilac. And we've also got the green to make a shadow with as well. So I'm just going to use some of that and put the white under here into shadow, like so. There we are, and there's a whole petal there can go into shadow. And one in there. A little bit by there. And some up there, and then the half of that is going to go into shadow. Oh, that looks nice. And I'm going to just make up a little bit of shadow on half a petal by there. I might use a little bit of the green now. Make it very, very dilute. Whoops, more dilute than that. And again. There we are, that's nice. Get a little bit of shadow, which you can more or less make up. You're just putting a little bit of colour into there. into the petals so they're not blank white. And you can use a little bit of one colour. Whoops, that's too strong. And a little bit of another colour. Oh look, that was straight onto cardboard there and it doesn't want to spread then. There we are. That's okay. Let's make it much, much weaker. There we are. Put a little bit of shadow in there. Made it a bit too weak now. There we are, that's nice. I think I like both of them actually. I like that lilac and I also like the green. I'm going to use a little tiny bit of both, I think. There we are, and it's very much. Uh, let's have a look. Go with what you get, which if you're on the cardboard, because it's going to sink in straight away. If you're on the gesso, then you've got a lot more to play with. Okay, we'll put a bit coming out of here. Or, of course, you could wet it first, which would make it slide a little bit better, but maybe not stay in place. That's rather nice. A little tiniest bit of green down here. Ooh, I'm going too weak now. There we are. See, you can play around with your colours a little bit. Get a little bit of both because the green is sort of reflecting off the snowdrops. I want a little tiny bit up here. That's nice, isn't it? Nice green snowdrop light coming into them. And you've really got to, you've got to just go for it and try it. Because after all, it's just a piece of paper. That's nice. Okay, a couple more bits we can do to this. I might just darken this down a little bit more. And ditto on some of the others. So we get that little bit of contrast in here. So you can play around with all of these now for just a little while 
get some darks in, get up the contrast with the darks and the lights, and then we'll do the next bit. To finish this picture, it just wants a bit of something more happening here. I feel like it needs a bit more dark. I'm going to turn it up the other way so I can see what I'm doing a little better. And I'm going to use my palette knife and a bit of this lemon yellow that we started with. And I'm going to load my palette knife up very thinly because I feel like some of that yellow needs to come over here. And I'm going to put it on here very flat and just pull it round and see what it's going to stick to. A bit more paint. And I'm going to allow it to stick to things. See where it... Ah, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. A bit more paint. It's better to put not much and to take your time and build it up. But that's nice, I like that. I feel like just a bit more down here. Take some of this across the bottom. And you put you I don't put too much on there. Oh, a little bit more than that. There we are. Not very much on there. And then I'm going to put it on flat and just allow it to stick where it wants to stick. And to make us some lovely, lovely texture going across the bottom. And why not take just a little bit of that going over a, a snowdrop? Okay, I might put a bit of green with it, make a different one. Mix it with a little bit of sap green, acrylic sap green. Just to get a little bit of something different. Then I'm also going to go back to my Prussian blue ink. Oh, or my green, which one? Prussian blue, I think. I'm going to fill up the pipette on my Prussian blue. And I'm just going to drop it on here a little bit. Get some dots going through it. I don't like that by there. So I'm going to get a kitchen roll. I like the rest of it. Dip it in the water. And remove it. A bit more water. It's amazing how much you can remove once it's gessoed underneath. There we are. I'm going to get rid of that bit. I like the rest and in fact I'm going to put a bit more down here. Straight out the tube. And I might add a little bit of water. No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to play with it out of the tube. Out of the pipette. Sorry, it's not a tube. That's nice. That's giving it a bit of dark down in that corner which I felt it needed. I'm going to do the same with a bit of the sap green. Don't be afraid of it, basically. I do this by not squeezing it at all, just shaking the pipette. Get some right down to the edge of the picture down here. So we're getting a little bit of extra texture on it. And then right at the end, I'm going to use a little syringe with some green paint in it. Hang on, let me dry it. With some green paint in it. This bit is from Boots the Chemist. This bit you can buy from the SAA, but it's in a bottle called a mask pen. And it's for putting masking fluid on. And you can buy a little bottle with two of these in it. And I like to take these out, keep the bottle for something else, and then I attach these to a little syringe from Boots, and then we can do this with it. make some leaves. There we are. Put it up the other way. And there's our lovely snowdrops done with a beautiful bit of light that's now reflecting down here with this pale yellow bits by here. I hope you will have a go. I hope you will enjoy it. If you need any of the materials, get in touch with us. We can always post stuff out to you. Thank you very, very much. Look forward to doing the next one. Bye-bye.